OK, option A.4.1. On the wall is a mass spectrum, and you can see abundance is on the y-axis, normally in percentage, and on the x-axis is m divided by z, where m is the mass of the fragments going through, and z is the charge on those fragments. z plus 1 all the way through this part here. The IB is happy with that. It's plus 1. And so the one we're interested in is whatever has the highest uh, m divided by z peak, so-called peak, which is about 41. So the one I just moved there, that's the one we're interested in. So let's see how molecular iron is made. So, oh, Dr. Atkinson, he, oh, he's helping out. How kind is he? So the tetrahedron and the fluorescent blue bar represent the molecule that goes into the mass spectrometer. Now, that's my electron gun. Let me just test it. Let me fire an electron. Oh, great. Now, you remember, a mass spectrometer has an electron gun, and it fires at the molecules that you put in. Very safe procedure. But, oh, there's some kickback on this. Oh, dear. I hope he's all right. Oh, well, don't be too negative about it, Dr. Atkinson. <laughs> OK, so you can see the electrons come off of my molecule, and that's made the molecular iron. So the molecule that you put into the mass spectrometer, once the electron's been pulled off, it's now called the molecular iron. And so the molar mass of my molecular iron is uh, about 41. And actually, the molar mass of my molecule would have been 41 as well. The electron essentially has no mass. So the mass of the molecular iron and the mass of the molecule that it came from is the same. Don't forget, we're assuming that Z is... One, the charge is plus one. And that's called the M plus. The molecular iron. That one just there. Lovely. Alrighty. Uh, I've always wondered what would happen if I put electricity backwards into an electrical socket. It must be safe because Pauli says that electrons can't occupy the same orbital with the same spin. What could go wrong?